Pin on disc tribometer. Pin on disc tribometer is an instrument which is used to measure the coefficient of friction or frictional force, uh, friction temperature, via volume. So this kind of tribological parameters which can be measured by the pin on disc tribometer. It can be operated either with oil or without oil depending on our experimental parameters. So let's see the experiment. So this is the base. This is what is going to be acted as the disc here. So a stationary pin or ball will be pressurized against a moving which is reciprocal movement or rotatory movement which can be set on the software moving disc. So this one is going to act as the disc. It is particularly designed for this job. And this one is the ball. So here we have two halves. This ball will be placed in between the two halves in the particular place and would be tightened. It is usually 10 millimeter diameter. Once the ball is tightened with the Allen screws, then we will fix it in the equipment, in the place provided. Before fixing the ball on its location, the specimen will be fixed on the specimen holder. It is highly preferred the length of the specimen and the length provided on the specimen holder is equal. So for this particular reason, the specimen holder is designed for this job. We didn't use the specimen holder which is coming along with this machine. When fixing the ball above the specimen, we need to ensure that the ball and the specimen are in contact because if you are going to test either coefficient of friction or wear then they need to be in contact with each other. The diameter or the movement length can be adjusted by this scale. And then we have the weights. So from 0 0.5 kilo to 2 kilos we have number of weights. We can add according to our requirement. When adding the weight, it is essential to make sure the string is passing above the pulleys. After setting up the specimen in the pinon disc tribometer, then we will set the parameters in the software. So the software name is Winducom. We will open the software and then, so here my experiment is reciprocating. We can set for rotating also. So here we can set for the rotating or reciprocating. So there is a uh, knob here. If we press this light, it will move for rotary motion. So whichever the motion we need we can select that one. We will give a name and when we can give some remarks so we can enter our parameters maybe the uh, load, the RPM, the time so these kind of parameters we can enter if we wish so it's up to us. And then here we are going to set our time so here for me my run is 1000 seconds so I will set 16 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, depending on our parameters and experimental data, we can set that one as well. And then here is the setup for the force. So the force which we enter should be equal to the force we applied through the loads on the machine. So these two should be equal. If they are not equal, say for example if we uh, put a load of 2.5 kilogram on the machine, and then we put 10 kilogram in the software, then that will show the error message, as like this. And once we enter all the parameters, we will set the force to zero, and then we will press acquire. So it will show some guidelines to check. So these guidelines we need to ensure before running the machine. If we are running with the oil, then we need to ensure that oil flow is there and then 
these all the conditions we need to cross check before run. Once we are sure about all these parameters then we can start run. So when we start run the machine will start running. So here my experiment is reciprocating. So it's moving back and forth. When the machine is running we can observe the graph. So since I applied 2.5 kilos, friction should be below 25 Newton. So we can check with the graph. If it is above 25 Newton then there is something wrong. Either it can be of uh, extra vibration or the alignment with the specimen and the ball. So there can be several reasons. So we just can ensure like this. So after 16 minutes and 40 seconds, I will obtain a graph like this. Then we will remove the specimen and the ball. So here we can see the wear occurred in both the ball and the specimen. So there are incidents the wear occur only on the ball or only on the specimen depending on the hardness of these uh, materials. So here in my experiment the wear occurred both on the specimen as well as on the ball as like you can see. So in order to calculate either the wear volume or wear loss by weight, so we will usually measure before and after the experiment the weight of the ball and the specimen. So by that we can calculate the wear loss. If you want to calculate the wear volume loss, then we need to go for the IFM, infinite focus microscope. So there we can uh, calculate not calculate there we can uh, got the image of the volume loss and then we can calculate by the formula here if you observe closely you can see there's a vibration the arm itself is moving there's a slight movement under such circumstances the force value you obtaining in the graph would be high high in the sense it would be higher than the normal load you provided so by cross checking this also you can uh, check whether the experiment is running smoothly or not in case if there is extra vibration then definitely you need to stop the experiment and set the parameters and the machine again and then you need to, you need to run because the results which we are obtaining would be wrong 